This is Business Incorporated. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago. On the show today, South Africa's Treasury Back CEO of Africa's biggest fund manager, PIC, says no plan to suspend him. And care to investigate 10 banks on suspicion of handling stolen funds. Plus, Uganda's telecoms regulator to probe MTN on mobile money policies. Let's get the show started now with the markets. And here in Africa, only the JSC index was up at intraday trading at 1.23%. Well, analysts say South Africa needs tangible economic growth to entice more offshore investors to invest in its bourse after a good start to the year thanks to improved sentiment following the election of a new president. Our Johannesburg Stock Exchange data show that after three years of being net sellers of equities, foreigners have so far this year to May 25 bought more stocks than they have sold, resulting in net purchases of 16 billion rand versus net sales of 55 billion rand the same period last year. But analysts say the gains are at risk of being eroded as investors await to see evidence the economy is growing. Uh, looking at all the numbers there, Nigeria's stock index was down 0.69% as at midday. Egypt came down heavily at 2.45%, while Kenya closed down 0.51% on Wednesday. In the Middle East, Qatar tr treaded water at intraday, while the other markets in the region gained. Uh, looking at the numbers there, Abu Dhabi was up 1.05%, Dubai up 1.89%, outperforming others. Saudi was up 0.86%. In Europe, stocks edged higher in early trade as elevated concerns over Italy's deepening political crisis showed signs of abating. Also, there are other big stories out of Europe today. Let's get to know more from my colleague in Frankfurt, Conrad Busen. Hello, Conrad. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming through to us today. Well, I guess uh, Conrad is having issues hearing us. But while we get that sorted out, let's look at the markets in the U.S. Stock index futures traded flat ahead of Thursday's open following a sharp rally seen in the previous session. As of 6.14 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow Jones Industrial Average futures fell 14 points, indicating a decline of just 5.78 points at the open. NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 futures indicated a slightly positive start to the session for their respective markets. In recent days, markets around the globe have been on edge over concerns surrounding the Eurozone's third largest economy, Italy. Thursday is set to be a prominent day for economic data. At 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, jobless claims, personal income and outlays are all scheduled to be released, followed by a Chicago Purchasing Managers Index at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time and pending home sales at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Donaldson, American Eagle Outfitters, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Costco, Lululemon Athletica, Alter Beauty and Workday are just a handful of companies set to publish their latest earnings report uh, today. Well, let's get back now to uh, Europe. I guess um, Conrad is now ready to talk to us. Hello, Conrad. Good afternoon. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. I couldn't hear you before. Okay, now uh, the ECB vice um, president, that's uh, Constancio, says goodbye today as final day in office, even as ECB marks 20th anniversary tomorrow, June 1, and uh, the euro turns 20 years old, January 1, 2019. Unpack all of these and how the market is trading the events. Well, it's really exciting looking back. Who would have thought 20 years ago what the European Central Bank would look like now? Um, just to give you one example, uh, nobody thought in 1998 that the European Central Bank would be the major supervisor for the largest Eurozone banks. 
it's the ECB who uh, determines the systemic risks in the financial systems and who has the power to, de to, to tell corporate banks like Deutsche Bank or Société Générale uh, what they have to do in order to stay in business. Uh, that's a job that nobody thought of uh, when the ECB was founded uh, 20 years ago. Uh, the number of people working for this bank has grown enormously as well. 300 people worked for the ECB in 1998. Now it's more than 3,000. And their boss, their third boss, Mario Draghi, and the vice president, Vito Constancio, they had a very hard time. Remember all the euro crises we talked about. Remember how Mario Draghi had to promise that the ECB will do whatever it takes to preserve the euro, which means that the ECB also has started monetary policies uh, which were unthinkable, at least here in Germany, for uh, the German Bundesbank, our National Reserve Bank. You know, it would, it would, they would never have imagined that the ECB would start buying uh, bonds for several billion euros every month in order to keep the economy from crashing. I have to say, Draghi and of course also his vice president, uh, Vitor Constancio, have done a good job. They, of course, are often criticized in terms of you know, their policy decision making, but the impression they are giving has always been that their part of the business is under control. And if you talk to insiders, <clears throat> if you talk to bankers here who have to, you know, deal with the European Central Bank on an everyday basis, talking about interest rates, talking about, you know, how much money is going to be attributed to which part of the financial systems, they are mostly saying that the ECB is really doing a very good job that you can rely on the ECB. It's really not only the lender of last resort, it's also the institution that, um, uh, can, that manages to uh, you know, uh, communicate a lot of confidence. And that's of course something we need in, in, in those turbulent and troublesome times here in Europe. Well, I guess we wish him good luck as he bows out. Now, is the European Union and the Euro in existential crisis? And uh, what can be done to save the region going by billionaire investor George Soros' comments earlier this week? Hmm. Uh, I have to say, um, I, I really looked at this, uh, those statements by George Soros a bit closer again. And I think what he basically meant was uh, problems, potential problems in the global financial system. He addressed uh, and that. Well, he addressed a lot of topics, but that's what he addressed, I think, uh, fundamentally. He said, uh, he pointed out that uh, many emerging uh, economies, namely uh, Argentina, Turkey, um, and others, will uh, face enormous problems if the Federal Reserve Bank continues in the United States to raise interest rates as planned three times, maybe even four times, this might make dollar loans in emerging, econ uh, in emerging economies unsustainable, and this might cause a lot of trouble for those countries, but also in the whole financial systems. But you're right, he also addressed uh, Europe and the Eurozone uh, by saying that, um, that uh, uh, the, 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 the construction of the currency union has flaws. Of course, he addressed the fact that we have one single currency uh, for a region that has very different economies. Uh, that, that this is a problem. Of course, that's, that's, that's true. Italy, uh, other countries would like to devaluate their currencies. Germany probably would have to um, uh, value up its currency given the underlying economic dynamics, but this is not possible. We have one currency. Uh, that's a problem and that's something that has to be sort of addressed uh, by the um, authorities and by the politicians who are constantly, you know, working on the Eurozone. Uh, Soros also uh, was probably right by saying that the strong austerity policies and the strict, you know, um, insistence on the stability pact has created lots of the populism in uh, Europe, um, namely in Italy. Uh, what can be done about it? I would say what uh, our officials really have to do is they have to communicate a lot more what the Euro currency union is good for, what the European Union is good for, what you and I, everyone, well, you in Nigeria maybe not so, but you know, uh, 
people living in the Eurozone and in Europe uh, have from the currency union and they have to of course and that's something that politicians all over the world have to do they have to of course make sure that they are not an elitist bunch of officials just uh, giving the impression of working into their own pockets this is of course important as well right just a quick one before i let you go conrad this is the final trading day in may unpack the best and worst moments and headlines of the month for us well, let me start off with the worst moments. Uh, overwhelming majority of people here, I asked this question, told me that uh, they think that Donald Trump's cancelling of the Iran nuclear deal was one of the most terrible events of this month of May. I mean, um, remember uh, when uh, Chancellor Merkel visited um, uh, Trump in Washington, but most of all, of course, this pompous uh, visit of Emmanuel Macron in Washington. All those dresses, dresses all those dinners, all those kisses and then two days later Trump just does what he wants he cancels the Iran nuclear deal which is for a, an overwhelming majority of people here a bad decision and something that is really going to cause a lot of trouble for businesses not only in America and in Iran but also for European businesses who have started to you know get back into business with Iran but are concerned that they can't continue to do so in terms of uh, companies I think it's worth mentioning that the share price in Deutsche, of Deutsche Bank fell below 10 euros again. Um, Deutsche Bank, really one of the, you know, uh, poster childs of the German economy, is still in enormous trouble. And an another poster child in trouble is Air France in France, which uh, you saw its CEO go because of all those troubles with the unions, all those strikes. That's a big concern of this month of May. What's positive, I have to say, well, of course, we do have a continuous. Um, economic uh, activity. Today was reported that in May consumer prices rose uh, at an annual rate of 1.9 percent. Finally we are getting in the direction of the 2 percent where the European Central Bank considers price stability which means that finally the European Central Bank uh, will start to normalize its monetary policy. And one last thing I think is worth mentioning, uh, what's positive also is that the German share index DAX got the jitters again because of all the political hassles, but we didn't see a sell-off in this month of May. And remember the old saying, sell in May, go away. Right. That's a, a sign, a pattern that you often see on the markets, on the equity markets. No, not this May. Uh, the DAX is more or less where it started the month. We've seen a few highs in between. And it's not a very strong market, but it's at least not a weaker market that at the, than at the beginning of this month. Thank you very much, Conrad. Well, we hope for a better new month. See you. In Asia, the market finished mostly higher today as global markets recovered after recent fears about Italy faded. Japan's Nikkei 225 added 183.30 points, while the Topics Index gained 11.32 points. Australia's S&P is 200 rose 27.2 points. The Energy sub index gained 2.33%. In South Korea, the Kospi added 13.98 points. Elsewhere, Hong Kong's Hansen closed up 411.77 points. On the mainland, the Shanghai Composite gained 56.49 points. And uh, when we come back after the break, we'll look at the latest in South Africa. Do stay with us. <laughs> 